the addition rule for independent events. Our objective, we want to use the addition rule for disjoint, non-overlapping, and overlapping independent events. All right, let's remind ourselves what we know that will be useful here. If I get my paper straight again, we know what probability is, a measure of the likelihood of a random phenomenon or chance behavior occurring. And we know this from uh, grade school. When we have two numbers that are between zero and one, okay, fractions or decimals, and we add them, the sum, two numbers or three numbers, the sum is a larger number. Okay, we want to remind ourselves that when we add proper fractions or we add decimals that are between zero and one, we get a larger sum. Okay, that's going to come into play at the end here to help you remember something. Okay, so what does disjoint mean? We want to talk about disjoint and uh, non-disjoint, if you will. Disjoint events, they have no outcomes in common. Okay, two events are disjoint if they have no outcomes in common. I don't know why I said that twice, but there you go. It's in there twice. Another name for disjoint is mutually exclusive. Disjoint events cannot occur at the same time. And we'll see an example of this in just a moment. So what is the addition rule for disjoint events? Well, if E and F are disjoint, if events E and F are disjoint, then the probability of E happening or F happening is simply the probability of E plus the probability of F. You simply add the individual probabilities if they're disjoint. Okay, let's take a look at an example of that. Keep that rule top of my paper, I think. Okay, right here. Age distribution of U.S. moviegoers. We have, have th 3,000 moviegoers total. Okay. If one moviegoer is selected at random, find the probability that his or her age is between 12 and 24 or between 45 and 64. Okay, so the probability that you're, bet you're between 12 and 24 or... 45 to 64. Okay, these are disjoint. There's nobody who's in this age range, age range, excuse me, and in this age range. Okay? There are no outcomes in common. Hey, I'm I'm 15 and I'm 60. No, you're not. You're one or the other. Okay? You're either in this category or you could be in this category or not in the categories, but either way, you will not be in both categories at the same time. So we're here, probability of event, uh, the first event, you're between 12 and 24, or you're between 45 and 64. So we're here. The probability that you're between 12 and 24, right? Plus the probability that you're between 45 and 64. Okay, well, let's do, let's do it. Probably, probability between 12 and 24, there are 900 of those. And we know we have 3,000 total. So that's the probability of, of a, the movie goer being selected at random, being in this, category, in this age range. Plus, how many are between 45 and 64? One, eight, excuse me, uh, 840. I was in the wrong age range. And of course, that's also out of 3,000. So we add those two numbers up. The fraction is 1740 over 3,000, and that can certainly be simplified. Those are both even numbers. I'm not gonna worry about that. I'm going to write that as a decimal. Uh, it's approximately uh, 0.58 or 58% probability. Okay, so the addition rule comes into play when you deal with an or probability. Notice, notice, okay, the sum is larger. We added 900 and 840. When we have a sum, we get a larger sum. So an or probability, an or probability results in a larger 
result, uh, results in a larger end result. Okay, the ending answer. Okay, let's do another or one. We're going to com compare it. We're going to contrast that in a in a future in a future a lesson. Okay, so what happens if the events are over overlapping? Events that do have outcomes in common. These events can also be called non mutually exclusive events. Okay, the other ones are mutually exclusive. These are not mutually exclusive. Okay, so if they're overlapping, we need to remove the overlap. We don't want to count people or count items twice. So for any two events, E and F, the probability of E or F, find the probability of E, add the probability of F, and then take away the overlap. So this is the overlap. Subtract what you counted twice. Subtract your double counting. We'll see that in our example. Okay? Add the individual probabilities and then subtract out the overlap. Okay. Let's take a look at an example how this works. Let's leave that up there so we can refer to it. A single six-sided die is rolled. What is the probability of rolling an even number or, there's that or again, okay? Or is telling us we're going to be adding, an or is a good adding number, a number less than five. Okay, the probability of an even or less than five. Okay, even or less than five, we add. Probability of E or F, we add. We always start with adding. Okay, probability of even plus probability of less than five. Okay, let's take a look. Our even numbers are two, four, and six. Our numbers less than five are one, two, three, and four. Okay, notice we counted two twice, and we counted four twice. So we need to take out one of those twos and one of those fours. We need to remove the overlap. We don't get to double count. So this is, an, this is an overlapping thing because they overlap. The two occurs here and here. The four occurs in this probability event and in this probability event. So we got to subtract out the probability that is even and less than five. Okay, well that's just simply the two and the four, right? Okay, the probability that is even, three out of six. The probability that is less than five, one, two, three, four, four out of six. Notice if I stop here and I add these two probabilities, I get seven out of six, which should, should present a red flag to you because probability can never be greater than one. So when you wind up with a probability that's greater than one, you know something's up. You can't have a probability greater than 100%. This is 117%. Can't have that. So we know we need to subtract out of this. Two of the numbers got counted twice. So we're gonna subtract two out of six because of double counting. And so the probability of an even or a number less than five, three, seven minus two is five. Five out of six, which has a decimal, is approximately eight, three. Okay? And we can look at our five. One, two, three, four, five. All the numbers but five uh, are possible to be one of these two things. Okay, let's, let's summarize this and let's talk about that or and the addition. The addition rule applies to the or probability questions. The probability of this or that or that, etc. Note, we're only doing one experiment. We're doing one thing. We're doing one spin, one roll, one choice, one selection, etc., etc. In these cases, we're going to expand or increase the number of possibilities for success. If we want this or that, we've opened up. We've got, we've got a better chance of having something happen, 
okay? We've, we've increased the chances of getting what we want. So we'll wind up with a larger probability, okay? With numbers between zero and one, I mentioned this at the beginning, the way to get a larger number is to add. Thus, or probabilities are adding. Or says to add. You want to keep that in mind because we're going to look at uh, multiplication coming up shortly. Okay? An or probability, you've done one thing. We're going to be adding up individual probabilities. And then we're only going to concern ourselves with do we have any overlap that we need to subtract out?